just for, for, for freezing. I was out storytelling when a snowstorm hit. Snow, snow, and more snow. I couldn't see anything but snow. Then I crashed into an enormous mailbox. And there, behind the mailbox, was a big, big, big door. Season is really cramping my style. Daycare is closed. School's shut down. Oh, the food shortage is gonna kill me. Whoa! I smell a live one. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Who? Me? Who else? Relax. I'm not going to eat you... yet. Well, I'd love to hang around, but I just came in to get out from the cold. Oh, but please, won't you please stay for dinner? <laughs> but, but, but I don't even know your name. Oh, of course. Where are my manners? I'm Bob Munch. And I'm a dragon! <laughs> and, according to the rules, you're an intruder, so I get to eat you. But, uh, but I'm too skinny to be any good. Wouldn't you prefer uh, a pizza? The rules clearly state... Uh, <gasps> Hold it. Did you say munch? The storyteller guy? The paper bag princess guy? That's me. Exactly who gave you permission to put a dragon in your story? It's it's pretend. I made it up. Storytellers, you think just because you make us up, we don't exist. <laughs> don't get angry. After all, it's the holiday season. Peace on Earth, goodwill to men. What about goodwill to dragons, hmm? When do I get something good? Something good? I've got something good for you right here. <gasps> No, I don't see anything. Oh, look closer. One day, Taya went shopping with her father. And they got this big cart, and they pushed it up the aisle and down the aisle. Up the aisle and down the aisle. Up the aisle and down the aisle. And then Taya says, my dad is not very smart. He doesn't buy good food. He gets Bread, milk, cheese, spinach, nothing any good. He doesn't buy chocolate bars, cookies, ice cream. Ty got her own cart. She pushed it over to where the ice cream was. And into her cart, she put 100 boxes of ice cream. She pushed it back behind her father. She says, Daddy, look. The daddy turns around and says, ah! Tyus says, Daddy, good food. The dad says, that's not good food. That's sugary junk. Put it all back. So Tyus takes the cart, pushes it back, puts back all the ice cream. <laughs> when she comes back, her dad says, okay, Taya, I've had it. You stand here and don't move. She stands like this. She's not gonna move for anything. Lady comes by who works in the store and she looks at Ty and she looks at her like this, looks at her like this, looks at her like this, 
looks at her like this, knocks her on top of the head. She says, this, th this is the nicest doll I've ever seen. Picks her up, puts her on the shelf with all the other dolls, right on her nose, puts a price tag, $29.95. Ty just stands there. Well, a man comes walking by, and the man says, oh, look, look, look at that. That's the nicest doll I've ever seen. I'm going to get that doll for my little kid. Picks up Taya by the ear. And Taya says, stop! And the man says, it's a lie! runs out of the store. Well, pretty soon, Taya's father comes walking along. He's saying, Taya, Taya, Taya! What are you doing up on the shelf? And Taya says, this is all your fault. You told me to stay up here. People are trying to buy me. <laughs> the man says, oh, 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 Taya, Taya, nobody's going to buy you. Takes her down. They go to the front of the store. And just when they're ready to leave, the man at the cash register says, hey, mister, you can't take that kid out of the store. Haven't paid for her. Says right on her nose, $29.95. And the dad says, wait, wait, this is my own kid. This is Taya. I don't have to pay for my own kid. The, man, the other man says, yes, you do. Dad says, no, I don't. The man says, yes, you do. Dad says, no, I don't. And Ty says, Daddy, uh, don't you think I'm worth $29.95? The dad goes, oh, um, oh, yes, 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 you are. Reaches in his pocket, takes out the money, puts it on the counter, takes the price tag off Ty's nose. And Ty gives her dad a great big hug and a great big kiss. And then she says, Daddy, you finally bought something good. Something good, something good, something good. We've got something good. Attention shoppers, we've got something good. if I'm wrong, but was that a uh, happy ending? What's the matter with happy endings? Oh, I hate happy endings! And how come she didn't get something really good, like a, uh, like a chocolate-covered kid? Kids don't eat chocolate-covered kids. If you haven't noticed, I'm no kid. I'm a dragon. I'm mean, and I'm green. A really mean dragon would have eaten me by now. Oh, yeah? You want to see how mean I can be? <sighs> I wouldn't eat you if you paid me to. So, who said I wanted to be eaten by you, smoke brain? That's it! Out! Get out of my cave! But, but, but it's freezing out there. Maybe you should have thought about that before you started calling me Smoke Brain. Make tracks, Munchie. Can't, can't we talk about this? There's nothing to talk about. Ah. <laughs> hey, come on. Have a heart. Sorry, nobody home. But you've got my backpack in there. <laughs> Go and never darken my doorstep again. Oh. Hey, <laughs> that's what I call chilling out. <laughs> huh. You think this is cold? I know it's cold. Brisk, maybe. Chilly, perhaps. But not nearly as cold as another night I could tell you about. What other night? Never mind. 
No, tell me. Oh, all right. In the middle of the night, Jason was asleep. He woke up. What that? 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 He went downstairs, opened up the door to the kitchen, and there was his father sleeping on top of the refrigerator. Jason says, "Papa, wake up!" Father jumps up, runs around the kitchen three times, goes back to bed, and Jason says, "This house is going crazy." But he goes back to sleep. Noise. He wakes up. What's that? 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 Goes downstairs. He opens the door to the kitchen. Mm. No one was there. Opens the door to the bathroom. Mm. His father was sleeping in the bathtub. Jason says, "Papa, wake up!" Dad jumps up, runs around the bathroom three times, goes back to bed, and Jason says, "This house is going crazy." And it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 below And out there on the ground There's 90 inches of snow It's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 below My house is going crazy My house is going nuts oh, But he goes back to sleep <sighs> Wakes up. Here's the noises. What's that? 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 He opens the door to the kitchen. No one was there. Opens the door to the bathroom. No one was there. Opens the door to the living room. No one was there. But the front door was open, and his father's steps went out into the snow. Jason says, my father is outside in his pajamas. It's 50 below zero. He's gonna freeze like an ice cube. Ah! Jason runs upstairs, puts on three warm hats. One, two, three. Three warm socks. One, two, three. Big snowsuit. Big boots. And he runs outside after his father. He comes to a great big tree. His father is leaning against it like this. Jason says, Papa, wake up! His dad doesn't move. Jason tries to lift him up. His dad's too heavy. Jason says, what can I do? He gets an idea. He runs home, gets his sled, pulls his sled all the way back to the tree, pushes his father onto the sled. Pulls the sled back to the house. Pulls his father by the toe. Pulls him up the back stairs. Bow, 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 bow. Upstairs to the bathroom. Bow, 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 bow. Puts him in the tub. Turns on the hot water. Tub fills up. And the father goes. Runs around the bathroom three times. And it's 10, 20, 30. back to bed and Jason says, I am going to do something. He gets a big rope, ties it to his father's toe, takes the other end of the rope, ties it to his father's bed, says, no more sleepwalking fathers. He goes back to sleep. He gets up in the morning, comes downstairs, sits at the table, and he says, oh, mom, it was a terrible night. Dad was sleeping here. Dad was sleeping there. Dad was outside. Oh, it was just terrible. And the mom says, oh, Jason, it must have been a dream. And then they hear the father walking upstairs. He's going thump, 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 thump. And then the father goes, ah, Michael! And Jason says, no, mom, it wasn't a dream. And it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Present. 
Now I feel cold. Ah, you think you're cold? Uh, what about me? Yes, of course. How thoughtless of me. Why, thank you. Thanks. You said you weren't going to eat me even if I paid you. Love to chat, but I'm on a very tight schedule. Spread a bit of fear here, a touch of panic there. Really, there's hardly time to catch a bite. No, wait. I've got something that'll make you forget all about being hungry. An hors d'oeuvre, perhaps? A canapé? Better than that. Perhaps? A mouth-watering fillet of storyteller. Simmered in its own succulent juices. Served with a dash of the finest herbs and spices. And eaten while still screaming. No! Even better than that! What could possibly be better than that? A story. You'll really like this one, I promise. What's so special about this one? You're in it. Oh. Well then, uh, yes. That does sound rather special. I take it I am portrayed sympathetically? Well, if you'll just listen... Not as the one-dimensional villain we so often see these days. With all the nuances fleshed out, my character brought into focus through action and conflict rather than simple typecasting. my game. Most of my fame is due to my flame. I can breathe on the ground, turn it all brown. I can burn up a town just to fool around. <laughs> I can switch on my blower like a real flamethrower. I'll turn it down lower and cook things slower. <laughs> when I turn it up higher, things get a lot drier. Admire my breath of fire. <laughs> Just listen. Here was a princess named Elizabeth who was going to marry a prince named Ronald. But a large dragon flew. It took an enormous fiery breath and went. <laughs> Burn up all of Elizabeth's castle, burn up all of her clothes, carried off Prince Ronald for dinner. Elizabeth says, oh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I, 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 I gotta chase that dragon. But she has no clothes left. The only thing she could find to wear was a paper bag. She put the paper bag over her head, ran off after the dragon. She came to a big cave. Cave had a big door. In the middle of the door is a big knocker. She took hold of the knocker and went bong, 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 bong. The dragon opens up the door, sticks out its enormous big nose. The dragon says, Go away. I have already eaten one first grade, two second grades, three third grades, and a daycare center. Come back. I will eat you tomorrow. Shuts the door. <laughs> Elizabeth wants to get in. She knocks on the door again. She goes, bong, 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 bong. The dragon opens up the door. <laughs> Elizabeth says, dragon, dragon, wait, wait, dragon, dragon, is it true, is it true, is it true, is it true, dragon, that you can burn up five forests with one fiery breath? Dragon says, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 Takes a deep breath. <laughs> Burns up five whole forests. Elizabeth says, that's fantastic. Just one more time, please. Dragon takes the deepest possible breath. It goes, <laughs> burns up 500 whole forests, doesn't have any fire left. Elizabeth says, Dragon, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true, Dragon, that you can fly around the whole wide world in just five seconds? 
The dragon says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He jumps up. He goes around the whole wide world. When he gets back, he's tired. <laughs> Elizabeth says, oh, dragon, just one more time, please. The dragon jumps up. He almost doesn't make it. He goes, <laughs> falls right down and goes to sleep. Elizabeth wants to make sure if the dragon is really asleep, so she says very softly, dragon. He doesn't move. Says a little louder, dragon. It still doesn't move. She walks over to the dragon, lifts up its enormous dirty ear, sticks her head right inside, and says in the loudest possible voice, dragon. A dragon doesn't move. She says, this dragon is asleep. She walks right over the dragon, opens up the door, and there's Prince Ronald. He says, Elizabeth, your hair is all dirty. You are wearing a paper bag. You don't have any shoes on. You smell like a dragon's ear. Come back and rescue me when you're dressed like a real princess. Elizabeth looks at him and says, Ronald, your hair is all nice. Your clothes are all pretty. You look like a nice guy, Ronald, but you know what? You are a bum. And they didn't get married after all. I'm happy that we're princes out of my life. It would have been horrible being his wife. I'll have a good time and see what will come. Cause looking for a prince is really quite dumb. If I find some sort of guy, he'll be plenty more than cute. But if He's sure to get the boot A perfect guy Who needs a perfect guy So, Dragon, you're really not such a bad guy after all. Not such a bad guy? I'm a dragon! The baddest of all the bad guys in any storyteller's bag of tricks! Oh. You didn't eat the princess. Yeah, but I ate almost everything else. What about Ronald? Huh. Not eating him was only good taste. Oh, it's not easy being a dragon, you know? Oh, I'm sure to you it sounds simple. Eat, sleep, breathe fire. I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than that. What I go through. I mean, the upkeep alone. Do you have any idea how much it costs to maintain a proper dragon's lair these days? No. Don't get me started. And then there's the image. In this business, crack a smile, say something pleasant, and then you're finished. Why don't you change your image? Try something different. Turn over a new leaf, Mr. Nice Guy. No, oh, why bother? It's useless. Nobody wants a nice guy dragon. You think nobody wants you? Nobody. Not a soul. Nada. Not know where, not know how. No way, Jose. Boy, have I got the thing for you. You do? Yeah, it's right in here. What's that? A hole. A hole what? A whole new story just for you. One day. Robin walked out back, and in her sandbox was a large hole. She bent over the hole and said, Anybody down there? And from way down the hole, something said, Robin said, Very strange. She reached down the hole, found something as far down as she could, pulled it up. It was a baby. And the baby said, Mermel, 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 Mermel. And Robin says, Mermel yourself, you baby. I'm just five years old. I, I can't take care of a baby. I'll find someone to take care of you. So she picked up the baby and walked down the street. La, 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 la. And the first person she came to was a lady pushing a baby carriage. And Robin says, Lady, do you need a baby? 
And the lady says, oh, no, I, I already have my own baby. I don't need another baby. And she went off down the street, and 17 diaper salesmen jumped out from behind a tree and ran down the street after. <laughs> so Robin took the baby, and she went down the street. La, 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 la. And the next person she met was an old lady. And she said, old lady, would you like a baby? And the old lady says, well, does it uh, have a snotty nose? And Robin says, yes. And the old lady says, well, uh, does it pee its pants? And Robin says, yes. And the old lady says, does it dirty its diaper? And Robin says, yes. Well, says the old lady, I have 17 cats, and they don't cause that much trouble. And she ran off down the street, and 17 cats jumped out of a garbage can and ran after her. <laughs> so Robin picked up the baby and went down the street. La, 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 la. And she came to a man waiting for a bus. And she says, man, do you need a baby? And the man says, hmm. Can I sell it for lots of money? And Robin said, no. He said, does it play golf? And Robin says, no. He says, will it help me wash my car? Robin says, no. The guy says, well, what is a baby good for? Well, says Robin, a baby is good for loving and hugging and kissing and burping. The man says, ugh. I don't need anything like that. And he runs down the street, and nobody runs after him. Well, the baby's getting heavy. So Robin sits down, holding the baby, and waits for something to happen. A big truck comes along. <coughs> truck driver looks out of the truck, and Robin says, truck driver, do you need a baby? And the truck driver says, I don't know. And the baby says, and the truck driver says, hey, baby. Did you say, and the baby says, yes. The truck driver says, oh, oh, I need this baby. He jumps out of the truck, picks up the baby, says, I need you. He starts walking down the street, and Robin says, wait a minute. You forgot your truck. The man says, oh, I have 17 trucks. I don't need another truck. I have a baby. You can keep the truck. Everybody loves a baby. Somebody was sure to come along. Maybe if you stop threatening to eat people. Easy for you to say, but I'm a dragon. I'm nine feet tall, I'm green. And red and yellow. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. It's great to be so many colors. What's so great about being colorful when you're all alone? Maybe you wouldn't be so alone if you turned up the heat. And maybe if you bothered to mention you were cold, I'd have already turned it up. You see? Deep down, you really are a nice guy. Well, it has been said I have the makings of a world-class host. Not by me. And I'm sure you'll agree that the Dragonus Fierce Mobilius is the most magnificent of all the flying, fire-breathing reptiles. Oh, brother, what a monster. However, even these qualities tend to be overshadowed by my 
artistic talents. Artistic talents? You can draw? Can I draw? After all you've heard, you have to ask. Why? Here, here. Take these. I, I need a fitting subject to get the creative juices flowing. How about me? Hmm. Well, just don't expect miracles. You're a lot uglier than most humans. One day, Bridget went to her mother and said, Mom, I need some colored markers. All my friends have colored markers. Mom, please. The mom says, I've heard about your friends. They draw on the floor. They draw on the wall. They draw on themselves. Bridget, you can't have any magic markers. And Bridget says, but mom, they're, they're, they're these new ones. They wash off just with water. I, I can't get in any trouble, please. The mother went out and got Bridget 500 markers that wash off. Well, Bridget went upstairs and she drew lovely pictures. She drew sunsets and oranges and apples and lions and tigers, hundreds of pictures. But after a while, she got bored. She came back and said, Mom, did I draw on the floor? Mom says, no. She says, Mom, did I draw on the wall? Mom says, no. She says, did I draw on myself? Mom says, no. Well, says Bridget, they're these other magic markers. They're the best kind. They're just fantastic. Mom, they smell. They have colored markers that smell. They smell like roses and lemons and oranges and cow plops. They have any smell you want, Mom. I, I need those markers. The mom went out and got her 500 magic markers that smell. And she went upstairs and she drew lemons that smelled like lemons, roses that smelled like roses, oranges that smelled like oranges, and cow plops that smelled like cow plops. And then she got bored. She came back down and says, Mom, did I draw on the floor? Mom says, No. Did I draw on the wall? Mom says, no. Did I draw on myself? Mom says, no. Well, says Bridget, these other markers are the best kind. All my friends have them. I really need them. Mom, they're called super indelible. Never come off till you're dead. And maybe even later, magic markers. They're the best kind. The mom went out and bought her 500. Super indelible, never come off to you dead, and maybe even later, magic markers. Well, she went upstairs and she drew wonderful pictures. She drew oranges that look better than oranges, and lions that look better than lions, and sunsets that look better than sunsets. And she just drew hundreds of pictures, and then she got bored. She said, I don't want to draw on the floor. I don't want to draw on the wall. I don't want to draw on myself but even my mother colors her fingernails, so it's okay to color your fingernail. She colored one fingernail bright purple. <laughs> and that was so pretty, she colored all of her fingernails purple, green, and yellow. And that was so nice, she colored her hands yellow, green, and pink. And that was so nice, she colored her face orange, black, and blue. And that was so nice, she colored her belly button purple. And then she colored herself almost entirely all over, and then she looked in the mirror and said, ah! My mother's gonna kill me! She runs over, washes her hands for half an hour, nothing comes off. She says, what am I gonna do? She gets an idea. She reaches way down into the box of super magic markers, gets one that's her color, her regular face color. She takes the people colored magic marker, colors herself entirely all over. <laughs> when she's done, she looks fantastic, even better than before. She looks too good to be true. She walks downstairs, the mom says, Bridget, you're looking really good today. It's time to wash your hands for dinner. And Bridget says, oh, I hope this stuff stays on. She washes her hands. All the people color comes off. Her hands look like rainbows with mental problems. <laughs> the mother says, Bridget, did you, did you color yourself with the magic markers that wash? She says, no. Did you color yourself with the magic markers that smell? She says, no. Bridget, you didn't color yourself with the super indelible, never come off till you're dead, and maybe even later, magic markers? She says, e yes. Oh, no, says the mom. She calls up a doctor. Doctor, doctor, Bridget has colored herself with the super indelible, never come off until you're dead, and maybe even later, magic markers. And the doctor says, oh, dear. 
Sometimes they never come off. The doctor comes, gives Bridget a great big purple pill. Says, take this pill, wait five minutes, take a bath. Bridget takes the pill, waits five minutes, goes up, takes a long bath. <laughs> the mother's outside the door. She says, Bridget, Bridget, is the color coming off? Bridget says, oh, yes, all oh, the colors are coming off. Oh, good, says the mom. And Bridget's right. When she comes out, all the colors have gone away, and she's invisible. <laughs> you couldn't see her at all. The mother says, Bridget, you're invisible. You can't go to school if you're invisible. You can't get a job if you're invisible. You can't go to university if you're invisible. Bridget, you wrecked your life. Ah! Bridget says, oh, no, Mom, I know what to do. She gets the people-colored magic marker, colors herself entirely all over. <laughs> when she's done, she looks even better than before. She looks fantastic. The mom says, Bridget, you're just the picture. Everybody will know there's something wrong. Bridget says, no, they won't. Mom says, yes, they will. Bridget says, no, they won't. Mom says, yes, they will. Bridget says, no, they won't. Mom says, how can you be sure? Bridget says, well, I colored Daddy while he was taking a nap, and you haven't noticed yet. Hmm, well, maybe it's not so bad being green and red and yellow. At least people notice me. And they'd like you, too, if you gave them half a chance. <laughs> I give them lots of chances. Uh, but don't spread it around, but I actually like people. Not for dinner, I hope. Well, dragons always think about food. Oh, look at the time. I, I really must be going. Don't worry. Did I forget to mention I've been considering going vegetarian? As a matter of fact, you did. But I really must be going. Hey! People to see, stories to tell. But there's still one more story in here. Yeah, but it's got a happy ending. I know how much you hate happy endings. <gasps> oh, quite frankly, I'm shocked. Shocked? Yeah. As a storyteller, you of all people should know not to judge a book by its cover. Or a dragon by his scales. I may look mean and nasty, and breathing fire might be second nature to me. But deep down, all I really want is a little understanding, a little love, a little story. Okay, just one more story. But after that, I really have to go. Once, there was a mother who had a little baby. And she picked it up and rocked it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. You know what happened to that baby? It grew. It grew and 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 it grew. It grew until it was two years old and it ran all around the house. Pushed over all the bookcases. Tore all the pictures off the walls. Picked up its mother's watch, flushed it down the toilet. The mother said, This kid is driving me crazy. But at nighttime, when that two-year-old was asleep, the mother would open up the door to its room, mm, crawl across the floor, <laughs> look up over the side of the bed. And if that little kid was really asleep, she would pick it up and rock it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sing. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, that two-year-old, it grew. It grew and 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 it grew. It grew until it was nine years old. And it never wanted to come in for dinner. And when it did come in, it would only eat ginger ale. Sometimes the mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. 
crazy. But at nighttime, when that nine-year-old was asleep, the mother would open up the door to its room, mm, crawl across the floor, look up over the side of the bed. If that big kid was really asleep, she would pick it up and rock it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sing. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. Well, that nine-year-old, it grew and 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 it grew. It grew until it was a teenager. And it had strange friends, and it wore strange clothes, and it listened to strange music. Sometimes the mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at nighttime, when that the big teenager was asleep, the mother would open up the door to its room, mm, crawl across the floor, look up over the side of the bed. And if that big teenager was really asleep, she would pick him up and rock him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sing, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. Well, that teenager, he grew. He grew and he grew and he grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown-up man. He left home and moved all the way to the other side of town. But sometimes, on dark nights, the mother would get into her car and drive across town. When she came to where her son lived, if the lights were all out, She'd climb up to his bedroom window, open it up, crawl across the floor, look up over the side of the bed. And if that great big man was really asleep, she would pick him up and rock him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sing, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. Well, that mother, she got older and older and older and older. And one day she called up her son and says, you better come see me because I'm very old and sick. Well, the son came to see the mother and the mother tried to sing the song. She said, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. But she was too old and sick to sing the song. The son walked over to the mother and he picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my mommy will be. And it was very late that night when the son got home. And he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the bedroom where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He looked at that little girl and he picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. And that's the end of that story. <laughs> What's wrong? Just something in my eye. A cinder. Oh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh... What's that? Oh, the doorbell. When it rains, it pours. You let in one, next thing you know, your cave's full of nuts and weirdos. What's that? <gasps> oh, it's on fire. It's a monster. It's alive. 
No, dummy. It's cute. Cute? It's a baby dragon. Oh, goochie, 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 go. Oh. Time for me to go. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Oh, you good, you good, you good. My fame is due to my flame. I can breathe on the ground, turn it all brown. I can burn up a town just to fool around. <laughs> I can switch on my blower like a real flamethrower. I turn it down lower and cook things slower. <laughs> when I turn it up higher, things get a lot drier admire my breath of fire. <laughs> 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 